Many researchers have explored the barriers to participation in adult learning, yet there is no single theory or model that is considered to be the definitive answer as to why adults do not participate. This video will explore three major participation frameworks that are often cited in the literature, including Rubens's recruitment paradigm or expectancy valence theory, Cross's chain of response model, and Darkenwald and Merriam's psychosocial interaction model. During this video, please reflect on the following analysis questions. How does Rubens's recruitment paradigm or expectancy valence theory describe barriers to participation? What are the main categories of barriers outlined by Cross's change of response model? How do Darkenwald and Merriam describe barriers to participation? And what are the similarities and differences between these models? Rubinson theorized that an adult's motivation to participate in education is influenced by two factors, valence and expectancy. Valence is the value that a person puts on being successful. One could be positive, negative, or indifferent whereas expectancy is the expectation of success and the expectation that there will be positive consequences for being successful. Motivation to participate is derived from both elements of expectancy. Rubinson argued that if education and training is not considered as having valence or the person involved does not expect that participation will lead to a desired outcome, he or she will not be interested in participating in adult education and training. According to Rubinson, participation is contingent upon the interaction of various personal environmental variables operating in an individual's life. Personal variables include prior experience, personal attributes, and current needs. Environmental factors include control over one's situation, norms and values of the individuals and reference groups, and available educational possibilities. The personal and environmental variables do not themselves explain behavior, Rather, the influence of these variables on behavior is mediated by the individual's response to them. This response, in turn, gives rise to intermediate variables. Intermediate variables include active preparedness, perception and interpretation of the environment, and experience of individual needs. The intermediate variables interact with each other to determine the perceived value of the educational activity, the valence, and the probability of being able to participate in or benefit from this activity the expectancy. The major emphasis in this model is how individual learners perceive themselves, their environments, and what they expect to gain by participating in a learning endeavor. Cross's chain of response model assumes that participation in an adult learning activity is not a single act, but the result of a chain of responses, each based on an evaluation of the position of the individual in his or her environment. This model begins with an adult self-evaluation and attitudes about education, considers his or her life transitions and the importance of goals and expectations for education to meet them, and concludes with the barriers and opportunities to be encountered, as well as the information needed to proceed. If the adult's responses all along the chain are positive, the adult will participate. According to Cross, adult learners must overcome three categories of barriers to be successful in their learning. She describes these categories as situational, dispositional, and institutional. All three barriers can operate both prior to and throughout the learning. Situational barriers consist of broad circumstantial conditions that hamper the ability of adult learners to gain access to and pursue educational opportunities. These barriers include the multiple and often conflicting roles and responsibilities of most adults in relation to their work, family, and community, the amount of discretionary resources, including time, energy, and finances, the adult learner can or is willing to expend in pursuing learning activities, the level of support the adult learner receives from significant others in his or her life, and the distance the adult learner must travel to reach the learning opportunity. Dispositional barriers relate to the learner's beliefs, values, attitudes, and perception of self. These barriers include self-confidence, attitudes about the benefits of learning, attitudes about self that may adversely affect learning, prior negative experiences and learning activities, perceptions learners hold about the attitudes of administrators and instructors, feelings of being isolated within the learning community, and health and fitness conditions that adversely affect ability to learn. Institutional barriers consist of policy and practices created, usually inadvertently, by educational institutions that are biased against or ignorant of the needs of adult learners. These barriers can include lack of attractive or practical courses, inconvenient class schedules, inaccessible locations, residence requirements, 
unclear registration processes and procedures, and entry-level criteria or acceptance requirements. Dark and Walden Merriam's psychosocial interaction model conceptualizes participatory behavior as a set of responses to internal and external stimuli. The model emphasizes socioeconomic status factors as being the strongest determinants of adult participatory behavior. The model proposes that the more perceived value placed on education, the higher the participation rate. Dark and Walden Merriam noted four general categories of barriers to participation. Situational and institutional, as similar to CROSS, and psychosocial and informational. Dark and Walden Merriam renamed and further defined CROSS's dispositional barriers to psychosocial barriers. Psychosocial barriers include beliefs, values, attitudes, and perceptions about education or self as a learner. The fourth category, informational, relates to the availability and awareness of information about learning opportunities. This category can reflect a learner's lack of awareness as well as the institution's lack of effectively communicating information about student programs. In subsequent work, Dark and Walden Valentine, using the Deterrence to Participation Scale, identified six key deterrent factors. One, lack of confidence. Two, lack of course relevancy. Three, time constraint. Four, low personal priority. Five, cost. And six, personal problems. Please reflect on the following synthesis questions. What participation model resonates with you the most and why? What are some examples of situational, dispositional, and institutional barriers as outlined by Cross? What are some examples of psychosocial and informational barriers as described by Dark and Walden Merriam? And what barriers, if any, have you or someone you know experienced to participating in adult learning opportunities? And how do they align with the participation models presented in this video?